Well, aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo, the tech star here, and I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew, the security guy. I'm back. Nice to see you, man. You've been Thanks, gone everybody. for a long good to be here. time. I've almost, been missing this, this little chair. I almost forgot what you look like. Anyway, we do not have a guest today because Mr. Lanning has been traveling around and going to some very interesting conferences, and I thought, you know, this would be a good idea to catch up on all the things that you were educated on. Lifelong learning lives here. Lifelong learning. Jay taught me that. So please grab yourself a chair, grab yourself a libation, sit down and join us here for another exciting and thrilling episode of Hibachi Talk. So you were at, um, uh, we'll just jump right into it because I don't care where we you went will. to school or any of that kind of stuff. We know you don't want to know where I went to school? No. Where I studied I don't really, anthropology I don't really, I don't and psychology? Patootie. Okay. <laughs> You've been abandoned us forever. Um, so, but you were at a couple of conferences in the past I couple did. weeks. I did. So we went first to the, the Business Leadership Conference, um, which is uh, put on by the National System Contractor Association. Okay, that's what I was, what's NSCA? Yeah, really good group. Um, they lobby uh, on behalf of the industry as well as they've got a variety of grant programs. Uh, Ignite program, which I'm the Hawaii ambassador, you know, to bring uh, youth, uh, high school youth, into the industry. You into know, what industry? The low voltage security. Oh, into the security, into your and, industry. And really, not even so much low voltage security because they, they definitely expand into the AV world. And then there's a group called the uh, audio visual world. The audio visual world, right? Which is the guys, you know, they do displays in the hotels and all, all that. And they also do the traveling shows. So there's those kind of that group of AV professionals, and there's also the home home integrators with the Crestron, the PLC controllers, you know, the advanced you're home sort systems. of acronyms again, PLC. PLC, Programmable Logic Controllers, okay. thank see, you for that. See, keep coming in there, dude. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there's 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 all these groups that sort of mesh under the National System Contractor Association. Okay. And definitely it's low voltage systems, which is generally considered anything under 40 volts. Okay, so let, give, give our viewers an example of things that are low voltage, you know, because not everybody knows what a low voltage would be. Camera systems. Camera Cameras. Intercom systems. Intercoms. Video screen systems. Video screens. Di like digital displays. Okay. Um, audio systems. Like okay. think of audio conferencing. You're in a room. You have a microphone. People pass the microphones. All you know the amplification. Public address systems. Um, PA systems are typically low voltage yep. systems. Sure. Are phone systems now low voltage? Phone. It's mostly SIP. Yeah. Yeah. So they're low voltage at the handset. You know, not necessarily at the server side unless it's cloud, but low voltage at the headset. Yeah, yeah. If there's a server, that's probably a high voltage piece of equipment. But right. The, but then the devices are all low voltage, so that would still be low voltage industry for so sure. So all of this low voltage stuff that we're all using now so much of, mm -hmm. um, it's all being looked at from an industry perspective and as an integratable perspective, or how is that? Yeah, and, and a lot of talk about that. I mean, the industry has been around as an NSC has been around about forty years. Okay. Um, they really work on standards and standards development. How long does it take to put in a standard camera? How long does it take to put in a, a standard microphone? How long? So they have all that kind of metrics as well that they compile from all. They have about 600 um, dealers right. that subscribe, that supply this information. So from a global or a national perspective, um, they're able to gain a lot of insight into you know how many. How many? What? What is it? How much of? How, how much of a crew size do you need to perhaps install a, a hundred camera system okay. in a week, or um, a, um, a conference room with you know four hundred microphones, you know, on a screen? So they they've got a lot of great metrics on best practices and what it takes to do that properly. So they're so they're essentially they're building numbers so that the when you when you are a de, a developer or a builder of a system or doing something um, of that size well, on the low voltage size. You can get to see what a typical costs would be. Yeah, and, Whereas, and right, it used to be pulling a rabbit out of the hat in the past. Yeah, and you should. So, you, so when you get around these guys, these are some of the tools that you get from them as an integrator, which makes it a great organization to be a part of. Um, the the business leadership conference is another thing that they put on that brings us all together. Um, it, it's this is a once a year. You know, they have these best practices and they do webinars and a lot of that stuff. But the leadership piece is really good for the owners of industry. To kind of understand what's going on in the industry, what's going on in the in the future of the industry, how do we plan for growth, how do we connect with our millennial workforce, all those types of things that the the business ownership has to pay attention to, the costs and all that of building. So, but I get the impression that in your industry, uh, this typically has not what's been going on in years gone by. I mean, your industry was I would call it a, go, a guerrilla industry. People were selling cameras and access controls out of the back of their truck. So we're, we're, I, that's my impression of what it yeah. used to be in the past. So there aren't, there are, I don't know if there's, I've never met another member of NSCA from Hawaii. Okay. And maybe they find it too much to travel, to become involved and get engaged. 
But again, it's been around 40 years, so there's not right. there's not really an excuse not to get yourself engaged with a group like this because of all the value that you get. But it is expensive. We have the travel costs. Right. Uh, there's an annual fee to, to be a member and all that kind of stuff. So if you say if you get all this information but you don't use it, well then what value is it, right? So it's, I, it's, so my question would be is like, so why would I not just go to Costco and buy a um, uh, um, a camera system and and drop it into my office building? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? It's a whole other episode, okay. but I can, I can um, in, in some instances, that may really be an appropriate level of technology. In other instances, perhaps not. Okay. That would be my just, short answer. That's your politically correct answer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very just nice. I, did you learn that I at the shop conference? at Costco. <laughs> no, but I did learn out that I'm, I'm not a great listener. Uh, I, I could have told you that a long time ago. <laughs> so so the, oh. some of the stuff, um, you know, some of the stuff that we got into, so they, they always start off with an economics briefing. Okay. And um, the, the guy we've had, these are think tank economists. Uh, he, the guy's up to many, for many years, re have retired last year and finally retired from us too. Uh, so we had a new guy, Chris Kiel, who was really funny because they give it a, they give economics a spin. And I, I loved how he opened it. He said, it's just kind of like meteorology. He said, he, he, he defines economics as the science of explaining tomorrow why the prediction you made yesterday didn't come true today. Wrong. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. I mean, I, and, all the, I just, I use, I'll use, and this is not economics, but I'll use Donald Trump's election as an example. Everybody said the stock market was going to go into the tanker. Sure. And it went the exact opposite it way. It still is. And so it still is. And, you know, I, unfortunately, I listened to the pundits and I took a fair bit of my money out of the oh, market. Okay. So you got half, hurt. Half. Yeah. And I went, oh man, I sure wish I'd left That's the reverse there. negative. So I've got some stuff on that. He, okay. um, he just said for sure next few years rates are going to go up three and a half to four where they'll kind of peak out for the uh, interest, uh, interest rates, rates. Yep. Um, inflation is going to level off and, and drop a little during that same time but uh, it'll level off under two and, and a we're half. talking about the guy that's going to explain later why he was wrong yeah right? yeah and yeah, of course okay. he, he said that with, a, with tongue in cheek um and the fall of the euro uh, which is falling kind of is going to help the dollar a little bit right um uh, that's a, a kind of be a problem for us because of inflation uh, anyway, um, the likely Trump winners. So some of the Trump initiatives that are winners, he said okay. likely. Uh, energy. What do you mean by winners? Sector. So these, these sectors should win under what oh, Trump those, says he wants to those, do. Those, okay. So the energy sector, uh, Keystone is going to go forward. Uh, investment in nuclear should be strong. Um, offshore drilling um, and, and the climate's not going to be an issue anymore, right? So coal burning, all that kind of stuff in energy is going to make energy a strong sector. Um, domestic manufacturing. So the automotive, the aerospace. Um, there's a little bit of import sensitivity there, but by and large, those um, those uh, sectors are, are going to be in demand and going to be supported. So, do you really do you really think that we're going to build a manufacturing sector in this country again, uh, the like other we were thing, in the past? I don't know. Those guys are are already sh big, so I think just just uh, that that reinvestment. I'll get to I think another reason why. Um, infrastructure was another one. He said roads, airports, seaports. Well, good. We can do a, How about our roads here? Yeah, well, the <laughs> question is how to pay for it, which is what we always have. Yeah, well, I tell you, if our roads get any worse, I tell you, I can't believe it. Now, I'm going to go out with spray paint. I'm going to put giant fluorescent circles around the potholes everywhere because they are now full. Well, the election's passed, right? We know so how that it's works. It's over. It's over. Yeah. So now we're going to They pay them before and we empty them after. Brutal. So some of his losers, um, the tariff battles, he said, that really hurts import-export businesses due to that yeah. uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. Um, health sector, obviously, he's, a, he's attacking oh, really? ACA. Oh, so because of a little, of little bit of uncertainty the, there about what's going to happen. Care? Well, the attacking it, right? So that whenever there's uncertainty, it's going to hurt that sector, right? Because yeah. people aren't going to invest. I, I don't know about that. I think I'd be wrong on that. Um, Based on he my said that the immigrant dependent sectors, which is ag tech, construction, and food service, are, are probably going to likely What about your sector? Lose what about bit. the tech sector? Yeah, so I think I think tech at my level probably is not so bad, but tech, you know, advanced programmers and all the H one B visa guys that they bring into the country, right? right. So that I think is what he's talking about. So that yeah, because that, that, that's, that's going to suffer. So the H one B visa guys are going to not be able to come in. However, I think what will happen the reverse is going to be well, we won't bring them in, but we'll just be sending that tech work offshore. Well, that's what we've been doing. Which we've too. been doing yeah. without bringing them in. And so, and that's really not manufacturing per se. So it's not like yeah, I'm buying a widget. Buying code, sure, yeah. coders. So. Um, he, he said that most of the uh, economic indicators, and I didn't want to get into all that because I need yeah. PMI and blah, blah, all these, but he said they're favorable f for really slow, extended growth, but we've got to manage inflation. 
yeah. but that the Fed has tools to do that so, with. So he didn't see that why that wouldn't continue. Just okay. this protracted growth since the 08 so he think uh, recession. So all the way through. But mind you, this is not a financial advisor show. Don't, Lord, don't no, no. We're just. These we're, are, I'm just regurgitating. Just regurgitating what someone else had. had yeah, which uh, which you know we didn't get this guy in Hawaii, and he is a think tank type of guy. So, yeah, so you know. we can bring him on. So, so here's here's a, I'll get in. I'll tell you why. You I don't listen, do you? You just talk. You no, just I'm going I'm to give this. I got. All, I wrote all these notes. <laughs> so the <laughs> yakety yakety yak. So the uh, I'll try to get through this for in the sec in the sec. So the uh, the. So the workforce and millennials, he, he got to that, oh, right? I like which is always good. We've, right? had, we've had shows on this. Yeah, so this is interesting. So 99% of the millennials will be over 18 by 2020, and 30, they'll be, they will equal 30% of the adult population at that time. By 2020, by 30%, 20, 20, okay, let me think about it. By 2020, 30% of the adult population will be millennials. Will be millennials. Heaven help us. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> o overall, they're about 30 more percent positive uh, in economic improvement than the baby boomers on local U.S. and global economy improvement. Because of them. Yeah, they're just, they're, they're just that much more optimistic as okay. a group. As on, a group. Uh, so local, global, and okay. about well, 30, is, 30 points is, higher than the boomers. Now, there's the Gen Xers in between them, yeah. but they don't count. Yeah. <laughs> apparently. Gen Xers and that, now just turned the channel off. Yeah. Now, here's that thing. That optimism that they have is great, but they are the most indebted ever. Who are? Uh, the, the millennials. They're in, Two, indebted? Yeah, 2015 graduates have doubled the debt of 2,000 graduates. Your 2,000 graduates from college, double. Doubled. Double the debt. And they're and, carrying uh, that and debt. And more of them live at home than ever. I can And that hasn't occurred, that. it hasn't corrected since the 2008 recession. In fact, it's continuing to get more and more of them live at home. Right. So that's interesting. No, okay. And so going. a couple more trends to worry about. There's real, relatively low workforce participation. This isn't particular to the millennials. What does that mean, workforce participation? Um, so I go uh, to the job and I don't work? People aren't working, right. So there's, so I'll tell you, there's a, and here's probably a reason why. And there's been steady decline since the 08 recession. Okay. Um, there's also low our labor productivity. The people who do work are the least productive in decades. So wow. that's a bit of an issue. But there's a skills gap. So 7 million jobs are available. There's 9 million people out of work. Right, so there's plenty of jobs, but these guys can't. They don't have the skills to do. They them. don't have the well. You well, we both know that because we know how hard it is to find qualified yeah. people to do the work that we need them to do. Yeah, and the other, the, the final thing he said that these trade battles are really going to hurt everybody, but the U.S. Um, it, it, we just have to watch inflation because it's going to make the dollar stronger, and so inflation is kind of the thing that we have to watch in all these trade battles. Well, this is where I think that I, you know, I, I believe the way you look at how Europe or carpentry worker Europe, Europe does their work, where they have uh, apprentices. There's always an apprentice who comes into the job and then learns the job. They've been educated, yeah. but they learn the job when they're on the job. Because we all know that you know, doing it in school is one thing, but when you get in the field, it's another. Sure. And this is where I think we're, where we're lacking. We need to bring back that kind of apprenticeship. Vocational training. Yeah, sure. and, and get you in the field and get you doing some of the work yeah. that you get to see how it, how it really works, yeah. as Rodney Dangerfield would I think it's a great, practice, a great approach, and you know, the... Um, uh, that, that NSA Ignite program is a great example that it's really targeted to high schoolers, you know, like, hey, here's an industry that can teach you without mm -hmm. maybe you don't necessarily need to go to college, but you could do it at the same time or whatever. Right. Okay. Well, good. We, poignant pause because you've shut up. Because <laughs> I, I, I can see the clock. <laughs> you can see the clock. I know how it works. Okay, good. Have you, been, you, you didn't forget how this worked. <laughs> anyway, I'm here with Andrew. He's talking about <laughs> <excuse> me, <coughs> the conference he was at and what, he, what he's learned. He's passing on his words of wisdom. And we'll be back in a minute after we pay some bills. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people collaborate and, and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Hey, welcome back to Hibachi Talk. We found Angus down on the beach where he's always at. 
Angus, what's up, buddy? Hey, Drew, welcome there. Welcome back there, lad. How are you, man? Good Great to see you. Great to see you. It's really good to I've see you. I've been gone too long. You've been gone way Tired. too long. You, 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 your bags under your eyes are so heavy, you're going to charge extra when you get on the plane. <laughs> anyway, I got a couple of things. You know, you know, my cell phone died yesterday. Oh, sorry. It, it killed me. It just sorry. broke my heart. It just died. I was like, oh. That's I just why didn't you know what they were calling me. That's, that's why I can't, couldn't call you. Couldn't, you know, couldn't call you. Anyway, I got myself a wee new phone. But what I found was a really cool gadget. A really neat gadget. It's a new case, but the case has a battery in it. Oh, a charger. It's a charger. That's so right. the battery I've charges your phone while it's in the case. But here's the cool thing. When the phone is operating, it uses the charger first, oh. and then your phone second. And can you just slide your phone out? Or and it just slide your it phone out. Permanent? It's, no, it slides out. You see, I got two pictures out there, lad. One just shows oh. you how it slides right in. Oh. So the cool, oh. th again, like the cool thing I said, right? It charges, it uses the charger first and then your phone later. My wife would have needed that. You met Christine, her phone died in, what, well, brick? It just broke. broke. But anyway. Well, well that sounds good. How much yeah. longer does it run? 40% uh, more time. That's awesome. Is it's it heavy? It. No. Is it's, it thick? Hey, I can carry it in my wee little hand. All right. So that's nice. Right, so I like that. So there, that was that was my gadget. But then I do this other segment now. I'm getting really, I'm really getting really PO'd. Another I'm, segment. I'm How long really have I been gone? How many segments do you too have? Too long. And if you're gone much longer, <laughs> we're going to replace you. Oh my God. Anyway, it's anyway, tough around here. Anyway, I'm getting really PO'd with people. We did the sharpened cart last time. Right? People leave their carts everywhere. Oh yeah. Yeah, I had one. I picture I took a couple weeks ago where the guy was like 50 feet away from where the cart should go. But this one's killing me. You know, we had bulky item pickup in Hawaii. Oh yeah. You know, bulky oh, item. that can be yeah. a mess. But, you know, I tell you, people are putting stuff out like I've never seen before. I mean, you can fill one truck from one house. Are That's you a house? kidding me? Oh, you think they moved? I, I, I have no idea what they did, but look at this. Come on, people. You can't really have that much stuff that you leave out on the sidewalk out for your bulky item pickup. Maybe they... I mean, maybe they thought other people could use it. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Anyway, I, I just... You know, it, it, they're driving me crazy. Anyway, people, I've seen that. please treat yourself. Like you want to be treated, and yeah. don't treat us like we don't want to be treated. It's a fact. Anyway, this is Angus McTech. We'll see you again next week. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha. Wow. Angus always helping us out with some good advice. Remember that. Always treat other people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. What goes, around, what goes around comes around. So I was going to have a security minute, but I think I'll skip it until next week. Okay, just because we got because this is so I got some good stuff. Okay, so you got some more good stuff. So let's yeah. just kind of re reappoint. Re wait, wait. Oh, try wait one what? second. The <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, my goodness. How's this work? Am I, am I the questioner okay, well, or the well, Okay, remember we did a show. We did about 110 shows ago. We did this show. Let we me, did? Let me restate something. I'm the host, oh. <laughs> and you're the co-host. I'm the co-host. Okay, remember? That's how it works. Gosh, i got to learn how to take <laughs> orders. Man, My wife will be happy. I'm getting trained on this I, today. I, you know, I, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> anyway, we're talking with Andrew because Andrew's been traveling, and he's been at a couple of conferences. The NSC, the NSCA, the National System. Systems. Contractors Association. Association. So National Systems Contractors Association. Business Leadership Conference. Business Leadership Con Conference. And you learned a lot about economics. You learned about what's happening in the industry. So what other words of wisdom do you want? You know, what, what key, um, key points came out of, you were gone for like almost two weeks. Well, that's, we're not even going to get to all them conferences. It was a lot of work. Okay. I mean, I've been busy, but yeah. I, I, got, I got some more good stuff. Okay. What's, okay. You're allowed to talk now. <laughs> Can I talk now? All right. Here. I'm going to give you this one. This one looks really good, and um, I'll get okay, through this one quickly because the other one's cool. But anyway, the, <laughs> this author, James Cain, has got a book called The Elements of Loyalty. Okay. And this was a, the, the big picture about his presentation was how to build loyalty in your, with your workforce, okay. right, and, and in your, inside your company. Loyal to your clients, loyal to your people, and to your staff. And there's a thing, they've, they've done a lot of work about how, so tribes, primitive tribes, initially competed with each other until they learned to start cooperating, right? Okay. And they learned to, to what kind of watch each other's back, and they became stronger in social groups. So kind of this is this, the gist of where a lot of this comes from. And he, he kind of summed it up into these three questions that he investigated. Um, do you make my life safer? Do you make my life easier? And then do you make my life better? Okay. So when you got staff, you got a customer, you might think, give them, think about that. So that's what, you have to, that's what you should be doing from a... Managing your staff and managing your customer perspective. Yeah, have those or, three or, or your customers probably looking at you with that perspective okay. too, right? So it's you know it goes both ways. Well, that's right? interesting. Um, and 
the, the whole the whole uh, competition versus cooperation thing, and cooperation ultimately yielded better results. And you know, cooperation we used thrive. to call that. Sure. Um, so as our brains got rewired, he kind of distilled that down into what he called these elements uh, of loyalty, right? And ultimately, th there are three: um, trust being the first one, kind of built on competency, consistency, character, and capacity. Okay. Um, belonging, which was the idea of recognition, the idea of foresight, insight, identity, and also inclusion. And, and this is what corporations should be doing? or yeah, Everybody should be doing everybody these should things, doing I think, this. for sure. Okay. After reading it, he would um, have felt that was amazing. And then uh, purpose, that final one being intention, fellowship, and commitment. So the, these three elements of loyalty and those, those uh, components of that all... all build to this place where, um, you know, I become a, someone that if, I, if I'm your provider of services, okay. perhaps, hopefully I'll make a security guy make your life safer, okay. easier, and better. Okay. So this is, is, this, is this a millennial thing? No. Not no, like the old this, days when the boss This was about to, business transformation. Okay. So this is like where the older days where the boss used to just yell at you and say, get it done. Yeah, that was, that was my style of management. Yeah. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So we it didn't to, work then, actually. Yeah, well, it, it definitely it, doesn't it work was, anymore. You know, it's just the way it was. I got a bigger one. Okay. This stuff broke my brain. Okay. All right, digital transformation. James Kozlowski, big thinker. Um, he has a book on digital transformation, which is this age uh, from 2000 to 2050. Okay. okay. 2000 to 2050. Yeah, 50 year age. Okay. Um, humanity's going to change more in the next 20 years than it has in the past 300. Okay. Um, the digital transformation because is going to give way to digital maturity and then to digital readiness. Okay. okay, so define for me what you believe digital maturity is. So digital is maturity is going to occur when we kind of, we're, we're, we're almost there now, but. Uh, we're beginning to enter what he calls the age of entanglement, right, where humans and technology converge. Oh, we're doing it all day long. Yeah. I mean. Well, so let me, so in 2000, give me your I'll give for, you. Give me your iPhone for a day. I'll give you the, uh, I'll give you the um, sort of the breakdown. So in 2000, okay. we sort of had these disparate systems, the world you and I sort of learned in. Yeah. Uh, in 2010, we started to get connected systems, right? right? Exactly. Which, which we all, net, we, we, let's network it everything. It was interfaced, and yeah. now it's integrated. Yeah, and, and so by 2020, you know, a few years from now, we're starting to see the rise of cognitive systems like Watson, for example, at yeah. IBM. And, and that's where he says we're starting to enter this age of entanglement where humans and technology sort of converge. And then by 2030, he's looking at, at the idea of collective intelligence, and that being that, that those cognitive systems are now connected. So you, you get the power of all of that connectivity. Is this like if, um, along the lines of artificial intelligence, like one of our previous guests, we were talking about artificial and, intelligence. And, and the, but the connectedness of yeah, all, all those, that, right? right? And then further, that final decade leading up to 2050, he's calling humology intelligence, which is really hybrid human artificial intelligence. So embedded artificial intelligence helping the human live. live. Well, so like, share. so would it be like this morning when I w walked into a room and forgot why I walked into the room? <laughs> yeah, would, you could ask it. And I still don't remember why I walked into that room. It's like hours later. Um, <laughs> he, he pointed out for businesses, remember this was about business, that, okay. that the gap between that, that really exponential rate of change, right, that, you know, that this next 20 is faster than the last 300. And uh, the sort of organizations change more logarithmically, right? Quite a bit slower. So that gap is what he calls a strategy risk gap, you know, for businesses in between there right. to identify what they're going to do. Well, I, I, and I guess I think examples would be of what happened with the World Wide Web and the Internet. And who would have believed that Amazon, I'll use Amazon as an example, who was a bookseller when they initially started. And I thought it was a really cool idea, but they didn't make any money. And now look at where they are today, where they, they adjusted, yeah. they adapted. They created new opportunities for revenue streams for them. Sure. And how many people do you know, especially in Hawaii with Prime, buy stuff at Amazon and don't yeah. go to the grocery store anymore or well, go to the and uh, department store? Sure. And, and I mean, online purchasing, they've already shown us, is rising. And, right. And, you know, brick and mortar is dying. So, you brick know. And mortar, I mean, brick and mortar, you go, you go to the shopping center, not necessarily to shop. You go because it's a, a, an outing. Right, you're there just because it's... There's a lot of other like, stuff at the mall besides stores, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's a lot of other Movies stuff. Movies and eateries and... 
Alamoire is opening a bowling alley. See? See? I mean, just uh, bowling alley slash um, a libation place. So shopping is getting boring. So shopping is so getting other boring. Interests. Like anything else. And I can find it. So, so he, he gave us a, a, a high beam list for 2017 if you're, if you're thinking about, you know, where to place yourself uh, in that gap. And, uh, and place yourself to, from an employment standpoint or from a uh, uh, don't, no investment advice? Yeah, I think things to work on. Okay. Um, he, he fills it in that gap. There's leadership legacies that are going to be born, you know, like Zuckerberg and Bezos and these guys. Okay. So, um, in 2017, anyway, he said just the, the focus should be really on pervasive, simple integration. So making what you have across the board and make it easy. AI, uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence, cloud delivery. So okay. cloud-delivered AI. Um, intuitive interfaces, right? We're tired of this works this way, that works that way. Making an interface everything that universal. everything the same way. Um, cognitive and collective computing, which we talked about. Um, AI, so conversational assistance, kind of what you were saying. Hey, wh why did I come in this room and to be able to get that answer? Right. So AI, though, cognitive assistance, 3D printing, um, Internet of Everything, not IoT anymore. Internet of Everything. Oh, Internet of Everything. Yeah. And so then, you think there will be an Internet of Everything? For sure. Yeah. Everything will just flow. Well, you know, uh, my hearing aids are on the Internet, so you yeah. can't get much more bizarre than that. Perfect. So augmented reality and virtual reality. That's an augmented reality. That's the your scary hearing, one, right? Um, and interestingly, he brought up cybersecurity. And he said Mafia 2 owes something to watch out for. And I don't know if he advised us to get in it or stay away from well, it. Mafia, what's, okay. Two, well, the, the digital mafia, the cyber mafia. Oh, the right? cyber yeah, mafia. Yeah, the rise well, of that. Well, you see what's happening. You know, we got a few other things that happened during the course of this week with WikiLeaks and what's, what could be coming out. Yeah, how's and that, so huh? That's going to be. What an interesting thing. There's a bunch of stuff, fascinating stuff happening we'll in that, that space. We'll get to that next week, I think. Yeah, next week he's going to um, dump something. This is an interesting thing after you all got, this high-tech presentation. You've got to move quickly. You yeah, the last second. thing he left us with was a quote from Helen Keller, okay. interestingly enough. Oh, wow. So it was go hard or go home. Uh, Helen Keller said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Security does not exist in nature, nor do the children of men as a whole experience it. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than exposure. Oh, I love it. That's, and then, you know what? It's a great way to end the show. It's great stuff. That's a great stuff. Anyway, go to the tech star here, end of the security guy. We thank you so much. Remind everybody, April Foolish coming up uh, um, on April the 7th. I still have tickets available if you want to get it. It's one of the best parties that happens in this uh, town. And we make a lot of money for a good cause to make a wish. Anyway, like we say at the end of, end of every show, you get no cup, by the way. You don't need a cup. <laughs> anyway, as like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How you, you doing? doing?